After more than three and a half years of being in my tiny home on wheels, there are some things that I know that have served me well and work well in my van. So I am going to share with you the things that I wouldn't change. I would not change the setup of my van. I did change it once to accommodate my new little single bed. I had changed it around so that where this used to be on that side, I changed it to this side so that I could have that bed be able to pull out. But I like the way that I can accommodate people in here being a small van up to five people have sat in here a little tight but comfortably and i like that i like that i can be able to sit across from somebody and talk with them or play cards or eat and we can be inside this little van i also like the way that it flows in the way that i move inside of the van which is very important so it's something that you might want to consider how Will you be using your van? Will you need it for anything else besides just sleeping? Are you wanting to have it for anything else besides just sleeping? I like to feel like I am in a room in a house, so I want there to be a seating area. I want there to be a cooking area for myself because I didn't want to be going outside to cook if it's raining or if I was somewhere that I couldn't be outside to cook, like in a Walmart parking lot, I wanted to be able to at least accommodate myself inside and not have to open it up or set up a table or anything like that. So for me, it was very important to have some kind of a counter space where I can do all of that. So I have my stove that I can store in here and I can just get out and use. I can also use it outside, but most of the time I'm more comfortable just sitting here like this I've got everything within reach and I can do it, clean it off, and then I'm done with it. And everything is stored in there that I need and also out of the way. It's something for you to consider as you're thinking about your design and how you're gonna set up your van. Something else that I would not change about my van is the size. And I know that that sounds crazy to some people, but I was riding around here in the National Forest and realized that my little van can get almost everywhere that I need to go. I haven't challenged it to go up way, way, way up in the mountains or anything or really off road, but for what I do and where I go, even little rougher spots, like when we were at Gutted in Colorado in Alamosa, where it is basically a big sand pit, my little van didn't get stuck once in that sand. And it is a front wheel drive, so it does well with the snow and sand. It also doesn't bottom out when I am going through areas that are really ridgy, like in Arizona or Utah where you've got the washes. I have been way out back there and never really worried, never bottomed out. And that surprised me. I was hesitant the first few times that I did it, but then after I did it and I saw that I could do it, <laughs> I've been to some rougher areas than that. So I love the maneuverability of it. I like that even when the roads get tight, I'm little so I can squeeze in there and my van doesn't get stuck with branches or anything like that. I also like the fact that I can get into spots where others may not be able to just because of my height and my width and my length. I also love the fact that it gets great gas mileage. I have been tempted to look at other vans when I see others that I love and I think, oh wow, their builds are so beautiful. They can stand up, all of those things. And 
So I have considered it and I've gone as far as to investigate things, but then I come back to gas mileage <laughs> and it gets me every time because this thing gets 28 to 33 miles per gallon on the open road and it has served me well when the gas prices have gone crazy in the past few years. So that is something that even though I'm tempted sometimes to get a bigger van, I come back to that I really lucked out in what I've gotten and she has served me well. Beautiful. Changed into shorts <laughs> because these got a little wet when I was walking in the water down there. I tell you, when you get in the shade, it gets cold. <laughs> Something else that still makes sense in my van and that I wouldn't change is the scale of my van. And what I mean by that is when I first sat in my van, I thought about how things would fit. And when you're in a mini space, you need to make a mini design because for instance, 24 or 19 inch cabinets will not seem the same in a smaller space. So I worked hard to think how wide, how low or high things needed to be so that they would still feel like I had a lot of space. I really did. I thought very hard about that and it's something that has worked really well for me and something that you might want to consider. These cabinets I looked high and low for. They are only about I think 13 or 14 inches wide. It is I don't know the exact dimensions, but I think about 26 high so that when I'm sitting on my bed, which is also lower to the ground because if it's any higher, I end up bumping my head and it doesn't feel right to sit on it. So I went as low as I could to make it feel still really good when I'm sitting and comfortable but then the ratio kind of from where I'm sitting to what I'm doing up here, it feels right. And I still have room to up above my head. I don't know if you can see that. So that I thought about a lot and that's something that you might want to consider. Obviously, if you have a higher van or a wider van, you can do things differently. But I took the dimension of my bed going horizontally this way is that what that would be crossways perpendicular so that I would know then how much space I needed here from the wall to the bed and then calculated from there and then obviously you just need your dimensions that are going to be the floor space and then go from there but it has really worked well for me it's something really to consider because I do see people in smaller vans getting a huge bed and of course you do have to consider the bed if the bed is the most important thing so if you've got a huge bed and that's what you want you take up as much space as you want with your bed but it, I also wanted this indoor cooking space so for me it was really important to see how this could fit with a pretty wide bed this is at least a twin size across and then my other one is not quite I think that is 22 inches or 24 inches wide and it's comfortable enough for one person to sleep comfortably. I sleep in that thing more than I sleep in this thing again. So that is something to consider. And also I looked for bins that would fit under the space that I created. Other people have higher beds because they have refrigerators or because their storage bins are different height. So all of those things you just wanna keep in mind when you're designing your space so that it will all fit around those things that you intend to use. And that is what I did as well. And specifically looked for lower, wider <laughs> bins that would store all my stuff just exactly how I needed it. 
and they fit perfectly under my bed. So that is something that I would not change and still makes sense. Something else that still makes sense is not having a gray water tank system. And I know that that seems really ludicrous, especially for those of you who have bigger vans and can uh, put that together in a system that you have enjoyed. But for me, I didn't really want to mess with the idea of carrying around one gallon or two gallons, five gallons of gray water, which is just the waste that comes off of when you wash up or do the dishes or brush your teeth. And that is something that I, again, I thought about what my specific needs were going to be. So I have preferred to use hydrogen peroxide. One to one ratio works fine. You can do as strong or as weak as you want of a solution of this. And so then I use the spray bottle to do my dishes and clean off surfaces and things like that. It actually even gets out wine stain, red wine stain from these wonderful cushions, if you believe it or not. I, I had an accident uh, a while back with that. <laughs> and so it's for me, spot cleaning and then just cleaning up things. I really love that it helps me to conserve on water. It also helps me to not have gray water for my dishes and things like that. And you've all seen my system of how I also get the scrapes off first, put them in my little recycle bags, compostable bags, and then I will have less of a mess. And even if I have things sitting around for a while, this just really works to get that off. And it's cheap and good solution for it. And I don't need a gray water tank then. Also, I use, yeah, I used to use this <laughs> little bowl for when I brushed my teeth and uh, needed to spit things out but I saw somebody else with a little smaller than this actually container for doing so and I thought that that was just actually very smart because sometimes when I had my little spittoon sitting around I'd be very careful around it because I didn't want it to spill so now I just use this it's a little container that I got at the dollar store and it has a screw lid, which always, even for my pee jar, <laughs> you know that I have a screw lid, which is just very important because if you have a lid that just snaps on or something like that, if, if you're on a rocky road and it spills, even if it's in an, another container, it can get all over the place. I mean, that has actually never happened to me because from the beginning, I thought about this <laughs> and so, I can't believe that I didn't think about this when I was thinking of somewhere to dump gray water. So even if I do have, say, a pot that just needs extra cleaning, so I do use water with it and it ends up being some gray water matter that I need to dispose of, I can just put it in here. I also can, you know, when I'm brushing my teeth kind of water, when I am wringing out water, whatever I need for a gray water. <laughs> literally this big and the um, I have actually sev several of them because they came in a pack so if I have more runoff if I'm in a place for a longer period of time I just switch them out and so that is something to consider because you can go anywhere with this in your hand or in a bag and dispose of it properly in a sink somewhere so that it goes down the sewage like it would anywhere else. And I don't feel bad about that at all. I use all really environmentally friendly products anyway. And when you have a smaller van where space is a real limitation, it really doesn't make sense to put a holding tank that is taking up precious storage space. So for me, that is another reason I went that route because otherwise I would have, say, my water storage. So my five gallons of water that I carry around for drinking and stuff like that, then I would need an equally big or, well, not equally big, but I'd need a space to take up underneath for that. So I just figured rather than having a whole system and needing plumbing and things that I would have to winterize and all that, 
just deal with it by having it portable. So that is why it still makes sense for me not to have a gray water tank. Something else that still makes sense to me after I did it and I can't believe I waited so long to do it is taking out the passenger seat. I can't tell you how much space it created for me and for me because I don't have another passenger going along it has been great for a couple reasons. One, I have this seating area and it's nice people find it very comfortable when they come in here to just sit here and somebody would be sitting across from me and we'd be able to chat this way or I'll sit here and vice versa and it just creates another environment where like so even here I can be sitting back reading and enjoying looking out the window because I don't have window space back there and one of the other big reasons is that it created another sleeping area for me and I didn't even anticipate how much that would change how I do things because I originally did it so that when I was at a truck stop or somewhere where I didn't plan to be for a while it folds out and it folds in really quickly and so I can hop from my passenger seat over here, sleep for the evening, get it up real quick, and I don't have to move anything else around in my van to do so. And that is, was my original intent and still to use my other mattress when I was settled for some time and I could just easily put that up and down as I needed. But I sleep so well in this that now it has become almost a habit to keep my bigger bed up so that I can just use it as a couch sitting area and I just use this back and forth like I would if I were at a truck stop. And it has been something that is really easy to do and since I sleep comfortably like this, I am really glad that I took out the passenger seat. Something else that taking out the passenger seat created for me is more storage underneath. I have a video showing how I built that out and I can show you now, but it has storage for my camp chair, for a little camp fire pit thing that I got. It stores three pairs of boots under there. It stores my tools under there. So there is so much um, storage that was created by just taking out the seat, creating a little box where I'm sitting on top of. So now that the floor is even with the rest of my floor and I can access it from inside and outside of the van. So I hope you enjoyed seeing what I would not change in my van and hopefully it serves you in some capacity. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.